everybody it's Chris here with Off-Road Farm and today we got the carrier and the pinion out to replace the bearings because I ruined them let me show you what happened I guess after I stuck the rag in the long side I pulled it out and stuck it in the short side because I was filming and then I forgot to stick another rag back in the long side and here's the long side bearing and race that is not good so these bearings, can you hear them? They gotta come out. So, let's just go over real quick how we pull everything out and then we'll get it washed up, back up again and then we'll start putting it back together. Before you remove your caps, make sure that you can see your markings. Clearly it should be marked on the cap and also on the case. So this one's got a sideways T and then that one's got a vertical T so that way we know which cap goes on which side and how you orient them on there. My carrier was in there tight and I don't have a case spreader so the best way that I found to get the carrier out was to actually use two different pry bars. So the one down on the bottom, I'm actually leaning against that one as I stick the top one in and then I'm hitting it with a hammer. Now I am protecting the ceiling face of that opening with some rags, but just go easy. You don't need to really hit on it hard. We just need a couple light taps to get it started coming out. It will eventually come and then once you get it far enough, you'll be able to just use one pry bar and pull it out. I don't have a thin wall socket that would fit this nut, so I had to actually just use a regular impact socket. I had to knock it on there pretty good with a hammer. You really need to make sure you get it on enough to where it's going to grab. I also don't have a yoke tool, so I just used a pipe wrench to hold the yoke. And you can tell in just a second when I get everything set up, there's no way this nut was torqued down the way it should have been. Yeah, that's it. It's off. It should have been a lot tougher than that. We've got the carrier and the pinion out. We just need to get out this old seal so we can get out these bearings. I'm just using a chisel. There we go. Now you may need to save this shim, so keep track of it. So here's a shot through the pinion. We need to knock out this race and then also that other race that you can just kind of see in there. So there's the inner one. Now we'll knock out the outer one. After you knock out that inner race, check and make sure if you have any shims back here. These shims control your pinion depth. There's actually a couple there. We want to, since we're not re-gearing, we can just reuse these shims. So we want to make sure we keep them together and we know what they go to. Now we just need to knock out that other race. So I got everything pulled except for these axle seals. It looks like an inch and 5 16 socket. Fits down inside the axle tube pretty snug. And then it's going to hit up against those seals so that I can drive them out. Oh, that is dirty. Look at that. I'm going to take care of that whenever we put it back together. All right, now I just need to find a really long pipe for the long side. All 
All right, let's get this thing washed up. ready to pull these bearings off of this carrier. I got this bearing puller off of Amazon. It's kind of a knockoff of the Yukon one. It's a lot cheaper. <coughs> so <coughs> it looks like these black ones are going to be the right ones. They fit around. So you put your center pin in. Now you screw this bottom one down until it's on the race. And then you adjust this top one to take up all the slack. So it's on there nice and tight. And we just put our outer ring on right here and we just tighten that down. That just keeps everything from coming apart. Now we're just going to snug this up. This is just a 19. And then we should be ready to take this off. Now, the closest I could come is actually an inch and 7 sixteenths. I'm sure it's metric. The closest socket I have is an inch and a half. But it's on this giant 3 quarter inch drive air gun. So I turn the air pressure way down so I don't tear something all to hell. Let's see how it goes. All right, quick pause there for the air compressor to pump up. All right, so after you pull your bearing off, watch out for your shims. So, all right, so this has got a couple different shims on it. We need to make sure that we label these and keep these on the correct side. So I'm just gonna clean these off real quick and then I'm gonna label them for the long side. All right, same thing. We're just going to go clean off these shims and then we're going to mark these as the gear side. So sorry guys, I don't know what happened. Somehow I lost the video file or I pulled the bearing off the pinion and put the new one on. The good thing is, is that it's really easy to do. It's just like the carrier. You just take your race that you pounded out of your housing, you put it on your bearing, you put your clamshell on, your puller, tighten everything up and pull it off. The one thing you do need to watch out on your pinion is your oil slinger. You got to make sure that you get that back on your pinion. And honestly, it should stay on there when you pull your bearing off. But just check that bearing, see if there's any shims. If there is, there probably won't be. But if there is, just go ahead and put them back on there before you press your new bearing on. All right, so before we press on these new bearings, we're going to take this old bearing here. What we're going to do is we're going to cut off this outer cage. So typically what I do is I just take a cut off wheel, just make a slice right here at top of one of the rollers, and then right here at one of the bottom of the rollers. Whenever you do that, you'll be able to pull the cage off, throw it to the side, all your rollers will come out, and then you can use this inside section. So this is exactly what you need to put right on top of your new bearing, and then you can press that on, and you don't have to worry about tearing up your new bearings. 
we're ready to put our new bearings on now. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our shims on for the correct side. Then I'm going to take our bearing. I'm going to go ahead and give it a light oiling um, inside the rollers. And also, I don't think you can see it here, but I'll hit the inside of that bearing as well to help it slide down on that carrier. All right, now make sure you put your bearing on in the correct direction. And now I use some one of my old bearings. I cut that outer cage off and I'm going to use that inner ring to help me press on this new bearing. So obviously I've cleaned it up so we're not going to introduce any kind of grid in there. Now we've got it all set up and we're actually going to use our puller to now press on this new bearing. Now what I did, I took and I screwed both of those plates that you saw me use earlier to help pull it. I screwed them all the way down so that I'm going to be pressing on more threads. So hopefully I won't strip this thing out, especially since it's a cheap China knockoff. Take your time while you're pressing. Make sure everything's going on straight. It should, unless you really got something set up wrong. But I'm actually going to stop here in just a second. Release the pressure off of it. Take a look. Just make sure it looks like it's on there nice and square. So we don't tear up this bearing. everything look good so now we're going to press it all the way on so you can normally tell when it's all the way on it'll be moving pretty nice and easy and then it's suddenly going to stop and you should probably see your press load up that's normally when you know you've got it all the way on I still recommend you take a visual check and just make sure there's no gaps back there. Now we're ready to put this thing back in the carrier. Now, if you're not going to be putting this thing back in immediately, cover it. Cover it with plastic, rag, something. Keep dust out of those bearings. So I'm going to try and break these videos up into some smaller portions. That way there's not one giant video for you guys to have to pull to go through and search for what you want to watch. Uh, there's probably going to be a video just on how to redo these bearings. Uh, my next video is going to be on how you install the carrier and the pinion in and get all your preloads right. And then I'll probably do another video on how you throw the rest of the axle all back together so we can get it back underneath this truck. So thanks for watching. I appreciate everybody's time. You're taking your time to watch these videos. Thank you everybody who has subscribed. If you like these videos, please hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like these, please hit the subscribe.